to Toadstool House Art. I'm Adele and today I am going full crazy mushroom lady because I've got my, sh my new shirt on and I've got my, my little crocheted mushroom earrings that were made for me recently. So I'm happy. <laughs> so things have been going well on the art front. Uh, if you've seen last week's vlogs you'll have seen me paint these little pumpkins not sure how that's picking up and I also did this sunflower we got it so these are going to be turned into badges I need to scan these and get rid of the background and do some colour correcting uh, but I'm going to do that when I've got three more designs done because I can have up to five before I can send them off to be made into little wooden pins uh, I've also been working on my digital art, which I can show you. Um, oh, I just have to unlock my iPad. So in my, my last week's vlog, you'll have seen me... Uh, one of my last week's vlogs, you'll have seen me uh, draw this. And these are all for designs for key rings that I'm doing. So I did this one. And I also did this cute little frog. <laughs> Sorry, I realised that I, I'm in the reflection as well, but like, <laughs> can't really do much about that. So I've got these designs to... I've got to continue with these designs, so I've got more ideas coming. So and one of them should be in this vlog. Uh, I also finally got around to designing myself a new logo. So this, you know, because I'm called Toadstool House, so we of course had to have a little Toadstool House logo. So I went with just... Um, just black outlines, uh, which does mean that everyone that I have sent this to <laughs> has said, are you going to colour it? I'm like, no, that's, no, <laughs> because uh, I whipped up some business cards. So this is, this is what I want. I want it just black on a plain sort of brown car, card business, brown business card. And I just want it to be really, really simple. Because I also designed a back for it, so this is going to be the back. And this is so I can have these as backing cards, so that when I do finish my keyring designs and they've been printed and sent to me and I put the lobster clasps on, I can display them on this side of the business card in, say, a little packet, and then all my information is going to be on the back. So I thought that'd be just uh, much easier and See, now it makes sense why it's plain, so you can see sort of like the card through it. Because I want to keep things uh, quite simple and I want to keep my packaging pretty minimal. Probably using a lot of brown, brown craft card. So I've got more art to do. Um, I'm going to be doing another watercolour. Uh, I've been working on the sketch, so that's ready to go. I can start painting as soon as, soon as, as, soon as I'm ready. As soon as I've cleared off my desk from the last time. <laughs> uh, I'm going to have some more digital art coming uh, this vlog as well. And I ordered something in the post. Um, it's not a t-shirt. <laughs> it is a, a crafty item that I've never tried before. So I thought I'd get it and give it a go. And that should be arriving soon. So I'll hopefully be able to show you what that is later in the vlog. So. Welcome back! <laughs> so I'm now finally on to drawing and painting uh, a little toadstool uh, and I can't believe I'm only just getting round to this because um, as, as you probably noticed I, I really just like sort of mushrooms and toadstools um, they're just cute to me um, and that, that they've got that kind of fairy tale aesthetic so the one I'm drawing here is based on the Amanita muscaria uh, also known as the, the fly agaric and these mushrooms are oh you know mushroom and toadstool mean exactly the same thing um, it's just when people are talking uh, edible mushrooms are referred to as mushrooms and the ones that aren't edible are generally referred to as toadstools but the words themselves don't actually have different meanings um, but the f fly agaric this one is not edible at all. Um, it comes from a family that are considered quite dangerous, they're considered poisonous. And you know, if you ever see them around, you shouldn't touch them, you shouldn't eat them. 
Um, they do, however, contain <laughs> a hallucinogenic, so um, it does happen. And apparently reindeer love them. They absolutely love eating these little mushrooms. Uh, apparently they become quite happy after they do, so <laughs> random fact for you. So the one I'm painting here, it's about halfway through its growth because they, the tops start out as these little, little bulbs and they are covered in white spots so much that you can't see the red yet and then they will open out to about this stage and the frill that's around the bottom, that's where the cap used to be attached and then you see it breaks away with these big white gills and some they can grow 15-20 centimeters, possibly even bigger and the caps will flatten out and there'll be this beautiful, beautiful bright red colour. So I'm painting it in my sort of usual technique of layering it up with these big splotches of colour. Uh, I really took my time on this one because this one has a lot of layers on that cap there and I used pretty much every shade of red. I used a bit of magenta for the dark parts and then I even added in some orange near the top of the cap just to sort of show the lighting difference and I'm adding a little bit of shading to those gills um, but the gills on Amanita mushrooms the entire all their family is is bright white gills uh, which generally mean that they're they're poisonous so if you see mushrooms out and about with white gills I wouldn't recommend picking them up so I'm just inking them here uh, with my brown pen and oh yeah these mushrooms supposedly are the ones that inspired Alice in Wonderland so <laughs> it is possible <laughs> that somebody who had a few of these uh, before coming up with that story uh, but I, I just I just think they're, they're cute you know because they're, they're your standard fairy tale mushroom uh, Any time like toadstools are mentioned in a story, there's always an illustration of these these red-capped toadstools. I just really like them, and I added those those leaves around the edge uh, just just to make the badge more cohesive, and so I'd have more space on the back to glue the pins on. And there it is, all done. I really like this one. I think I did a pretty decent job of getting a lot of texture onto that mushroom cap and onto the stem. And yeah, I am quite happy with this one. Uh, so far, anyway, it is my favourite. Um, like I say, I just, I just really like these. And if you've been watching my vlogs, you can see <laughs> a lot of the t-shirts I have have mushrooms printed on them. So yeah, I think this one is going to be adorable when it's all printed up on a badge. Hello everyone. Uh, so, sorry that was my chair moving. <laughs> so this week I bought myself a pyrography kit, which is basically the fancy way of saying wood burning. So I'm just going to open that up now because that's been something I wanted to try for a while. And I finally got a kit. Uh, I got it on eBay. Uh, I, it's new, but I bid on it, so I did get it a little bit cheaper. And I'm quite zoomed in. <laughs> I hope this fits. Oh, oh, it comes in a case. That's good. Sorry, there's going to be some crinkling. So I can't remember how many pieces this has, but I think it's something like 72. Okay. Yes, liking the case. Um, okay. Scoosh that in for you. So it comes with some stencils. Those look like faces. Oh, and some letter stencils. That might be useful. Uh, okay, I don't know what this is yet. What is this? Is this oh, is this my mat? Okay, I don't know what those are yet. We'll figure that out. Okay, and... Oh yes, this one came with some, some pencils. So I do want to add colour. So we should try those out. And... Oh, is this a, is this a stand? Yes. There we go. Okay, okay. So I got a bunch... I picked this one because it came with a bunch of different tips. I knew I wanted to be working quite small. 
let's have a look at those. Okay. Oh, I see. Yeah, so I've got some narrow ones, I've got some chisel tips. Uh, it even comes with a knife, so I could cut through things. I don't know if I'm going to use that. Um, oh, are these more tips? Okay, so I've never done this before, so this is going to be a bit of a, a learning curve. But here's the actual soldering iron. Because that's all uh, that's all this is, is this soldering iron. Ooh, come on. Okay, right, so I'm going to do that bit. And that's your temperature, okay. And are these more tips? These might be more tips, actually. Ooh. And, oh, okay, another knife and some other pieces. Right, okay. So I'm going to have a go with it. And what I'm going to do it on is one of these wood slices, which you can buy pretty much everywhere. But this is a... Uh, my mum did this. She says this is from about two years ago. Um, and it, this is vinyl, but it didn't quite stick. I don't know if you can see, but there it, it came... And there it came apart because it's so thin. So I am going to be practicing on the back of this. Um, I also, when we went out the other night doing some food shopping, I picked up these, which are just round key rings, little wooden ones. Uh, so I'm going to try those, but we'll see how it goes on here first. So yeah, give me a second, I'll plug everything in. Oh, and one more thing, I am using this um, heat resistant soldering mat. Uh, this was actually a present I got from my dad last Christmas and he hasn't used it yet. So he's out today, so I'm borrowing it. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to plug everything in and set everything up and read my instructions. Okay, so I'm back. Uh, I read the instructions and it basically... All of this just says, don't touch the tip, it's hot. <laughs> That's the whole thing. Um, I still don't know what this is for feels slightly like greasy I have no idea what that is for uh, so um, I'm just gonna get going as you see I already tested it here just to make sure it was hot and I'm gonna put on uh, one of my work gloves just in case because <laughs> I was like yeah of course the tips hot and now I'm like you know what <laughs> I've forgotten stuff before so let's just let's just wear the glove so and I put in the chisel tip because I've seen a lot of people doing um, sort of like the full artwork with just this tip. So I'm going to be working on the back of this. And I've got my mat, my little stand. I don't know if you can see. I just opened it up and that just sits in there. So yeah, let's just try. See, I already touched the metal bit. Okay. So it doesn't really matter what I do on here as long as it... Okay. Ooh. Okay. Right. So the one thing I know you're supposed to, you don't want it too, um, too burned. Basically, you don't want, uh, like a brown edge. You just want this. So I've got this at two fifty. Wonder if that's a little warm. You know, I'm gonna turn it down to two hundred because I've heard low and slow. It's better. So but I'm just gonna keep going. Uh, I'm not really sure. Can we draw something? Okay, it's a bit difficult because of the surface of the wood. It tends to want to follow the grains. Okay, well it's it's not a good circle. Okay, see now I'm wondering if it's hot enough. Interesting. I think there's going to be a bit of a bit of a learning curve with this. So, but definitely the chisel tip for the straight lines. I mean, look at that. That's, that's really good. Let's see what other tips do I have? I have some really fine pointed ones. That might have been better. Mm. Okay. Well, I've got I've got another glove, so I might pop one of those in. Because I, I need to figure out sort of which tips do best for what. 
Okay, so let's see, maybe the chisel tip isn't the best for colouring in, but then again, maybe I'm just not, not using it right. Okay, so we can do a wiggly line. Okay, it does best when the full edge is down on the wood, when it's just the point. You can see, you can see the difference, this is much darker. Okay. So like that, yeah, as opposed to... Oops. That. Yes. Okay. Okay. I get it now. Okay. All right. So I think I'm going to switch to, and I'm going to get my glove first and then I think I'm going to switch to another tip. One of the fine pointed ones and see how we go with that one. Okay. I'm back again and I've done some more research and I don't think I had the soldering iron hot enough. Um, when I, when I read that it said, keep it low. I thought it meant like on the lowest setting and it, it doesn't so I'm about I'm at about 375 here I'm just waiting for the tip to heat up I did use the uh, this tip this fine point and that that seems to be great for dotting but like trying to draw with it did not work so I have a flat tip in right now and I am going to try to draw something so I've had, it, it is hard because of the grain of this wood is obviously going round and round. So you can see here it's quite rough. So yeah, I think there's, there's going to be a bit of a learning curve to this. So I'm just drawing a very quick uh, little mushroom here. And we'll see how this goes. So that's, that's been heating for a few minutes, so it should be all right now. Uh, again, going to put gloves on both hands because I don't trust myself. Um, these are just work gloves. They're not necessarily for handling hot things, but they are working. So I don't know if you're going to be able to see that, that tip. It, it, it's just a flat tip, this one. So from what I've been looking at, you have to turn what you're working on instead of trying to turn your hand because that just won't work as well. But yeah, it's my mushroom. <laughs> oh, it's an ugly mushroom. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I'm going to keep practicing and hopefully by the time <laughs> I come back with it, uh, I'll have improved. Or thrown it all away. No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> all right, I will. I'm going to do some more like testing on this, but I don't think that's going to be very interesting to film. So yeah, see you later. Okay, all right, I'm back one more time. Just because uh, I realized I hadn't tried any of those curings. So I thought, give it a go before I pack it away. A little frustrated because <laughs> uh, of how messy this one turned out. But how much better does this look than that? And this is, like, I just did this really quickly. Uh, didn't bother, like, sketching out or anything. That's why it's not... <laughs> centered or anything because uh, I just wanted a quick practice practice but this this is much better so I'm thinking that this because of the grain is just making it really difficult for me since I'm new uh, so this might be the more advanced uh, way to do it and this might be where I was supposed to start so the, the, like, these are just like I think just MDF and you can see on this one I don't actually know if you could see because the grain is so fine it still does affect, like you see this this part here is, is straighter than I wanted it to be. Um, I'm still having to figure out the temperature. Like right now, it, this thing is up at, uh, Stan's come with it, uh, 400 and almost up to full 450, uh, which felt like a little bit much for this. Um, does that burn? I don't know. But yeah, so there is a learning curve and depending on what type of wood you use, it seems like the temperature needs to be different. 
Um, but yeah, okay, I'm not as <laughs> I'm not as as disappointed as I was a few minutes ago. So yeah, okay, now I am gonna pack this away. I've got other things to do. Uh, yeah, so hopefully. <laughs> that's so ugly hopefully things will turn out better like like this one here okay so here i am with more digital art uh this is another keyring design and since i did a, a teacup last time i decided it needed to have a teapot now i wasn't sure what i was going to put in it but i eventually decided on a tree and uh, this first tree here i hate it it's super ugly it had to go <laughs> So yeah, it turns out I'm, I'm not the best at drawing trees. This actually took a while, but that first attempt was terrible. Oh, I hate it. I hate it so much. So inspiration wise, I was thinking sort of like a bonsai tree, how their branches and their roots sort of spread out and they have a very specific look. So I decided to do something like that. And I at that first attempt of the tree where I was drawing sort of like these individual sort of blobs to represent the leaves that that wasn't working that wasn't working well at all so I decided to just do like the canopy as one piece because these are meant to be very simple designs uh, since they're going to be key rings they're only going to be a couple of inches tall so the best way to get an image to translate is to do sort of larger areas of colour and simple shapes. So that's what I ended up going with. And so I just added in some highlighted areas, highlighted some leaves and just used various shades of green to create like just a little bit of contrast there. And I also added a dark brown on the tree trunk because it was looking a little flat and I think this adds uh, a lot more texture. And I was having trouble thinking about what else to put in this teapot with it because things were, it was looking a bit bare, a bit empty, a bit flat. Uh, I did think about adding in a pond, but that's kind of an idea I've already done. So I even went through sort of like, do I put flowers in? Do I put mushrooms in? Uh, but eventually, I settled on the idea of drawing um, a little, a little cottage, uh, which will appear in a moment. And that I think it really. It really finished it off. I thought this makes it look like a little self-contained like little world. Uh, so I have come to the realization that some of my work does have like a, a bit of a fantasy element to it. And when I added in that washing line there, I was just like, oh yeah, that, that completes it. Um, I really thought this made it like a proper little piece of art instead of just like a, it's just a tree and a teapot. And I even added a little well in the in the spout there. So this one, this one took a little bit of time to figure out, like say mostly the tree. And I drew on the, the little highlights to show that it's a, it is a glass teapot, uh, even adding in the, the what, big ones there. And this one came out really nice. Um, so much better than where it started. That ugly first tree was never going to work. And I think this looks a lot better and will make a really nice keyring. I really like this one. gonna get in the way. I said goodbye. <laughs> That's Salem who has chosen to wake up <laughs> as I film my outro. Um, so yeah my pyrography attempt did not go well. Um, I'm gonna put that down as a bit of a failure but I think I found out why because um, having looking through other people's like professional pyrographers is a hard word to say um they use their tips are different and their soldering iron looks completely different from what i've got so i think what i've got is just a basic soldering iron that like anyone can use and like it's not really for pyrography you can use it for it but it's not really for that so uh, i had a look around and <laughs> i found another one that's more like professional standard um it's got better tips because it's it sounds like you need like a ball tip to help you go over the wood smoothly to get smooth like nice clean lines uh so i'm not giving up but i have bought that so that will be here 
I think it's going to take a couple of weeks to come. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to try again and hopefully next time it won't be such a disaster. <laughs> Um, and I've got some other wooden bits, um, stuff that's like smoother for me to work on. I've got lots of different shapes coming as well. Uh, yeah, so I'm just buying stuff without proving I can do it yet. So <laughs> that's good. But anyway, I think this vlog's going to be a little bit long because of all that. So I'm going to end it here. Uh, hope you enjoyed it, watching me struggle. And I will see you next time. Bye.